The space shuttle apparently fell in two waves, and pieces fell for several hours. Dr. James Kroll heard an explosion, then looked up and saw Columbia tumbling apart at about 5,000 feet. You know, there were, there were lots of contrails, and it was, there were lots of multiple explosions. The explosions really were the pieces breaking the sound barrier. The most interesting thing about it was that it's 25,000 miles around the Earth, and the shuttle came down on the only place on the Earth that was totally ready to handle it. And even to add on top of that, the National Guard was doing maneuvers that weekend. Because we were involved in the hazard mitigation planning, we had acquired some software that allows you to take a 911 address and get a, a geospatial location. The first dots on the map were derived from phone calls and us being able to convert that to where that is on the face of the earth. Data from debris locations plus the Texas Forest Service were critical in generating the primary search vector. Using this technology for emergency response has been part of our plan from the very beginning. The very, very first briefing papers we put together included emergency response as a line item and the services we would render. Quite a few of the folks in, in the Nacogdoches County area specifically uh, grabbed their cell phones when they ran out of the house. And so they're calling the 911 dispatcher, and if you look at the transcripts, uh, they're full of the dispatcher saying, you know, what is your location? And I began to plot in some of these general locations from the cell phones because I grew up and hunted and fished and, and was Boy Scouts in this area. So I knew where a lot of these locations were. It's called best fit data. I don't have an absolute address, but if I have a, a call from a 911 sheet that says second White House on the right past the Nazarene Cemetery, then I would look on the satellite image. I would find the White House past the cemetery and put a dot. The Ferguson Building contains the Hughes Geographic Information Systems Lab, or GIS. The lab's coordinated by Bill Gardner, who I worked with as a student athletic trainer at SFA while I was in high school. So I got over here, called my crew in, my student assistants, met up with Tread Riggs, met up with Greg. We had students out in the field within a couple of hours. Everything was kind of a chaos. We knew we had to search, but didn't know where to search. And so I divided the city up. Um, with uh, North Street and Main Street, had my groups of GPS crews, had Scott Warren people as well. We were trying to hand pick my person instead of going through there, while you're out, if those roads aren't in your area, you know, don't search them because you got another crew searching that. And go out and find all the debris you can. And we got a call from uh, Nacogdoches area radio operators, and they needed some high-end GPS assistance in St. Augustine. So I was dispatched with one of the uh, radio club members, also they're members of Skywarn, and he was in constant contact with another member of Skywarn in San Augustine County. And uh, everybody was assembling at the Chinkapin Baptist Church that was set up as a temporary command post. We learned the hard way that San Augustine wasn't as far as the debris went. It actually went farther. As day one progressed, people started gathering around the parking lot at Commercial Bank. Many of the bank's employees became ambassadors for the city. Our president, uh, Ruth Ann, was here and everybody was just going different directions. And so I called Tony, I said, Tony, what's happening out there? Because, you know, him with the uh, police radio, he was kind of in the loop of knowing what was going on. I went out in front of the bank and waited for him and he picked me up uh, just in a hurry, you know, because he was off doing his thing. And that, that day I, I was able to follow him. Pappy thought he heard something hit a tree over here. Mm. They could come through these trees. At 8 o'clock this morning? This is where it hit right here and it bounced over there. Oh this my goodness. Right yeah, because see, yours will... It must have come right through there. Yeah, Golly. it came through here and it hit right, right there. there. And see, this this is uh, parts of it. And yeah, it's all, all scattered debris, All that aluminum stuff right there? Yes, sir. What was here? That's, That's where, where it hit. hit. That's where it hit and bounced. It bounced. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it hit one of those tanks. Mm -hmm. mm. oh, You're sorry. still on? Yeah. Oh, hell. Well, God just moved me. As a Texas constable, Tony has the authority to serve Nacogdoches County and any contiguous county. In other words, he was very busy for the first few days. Uh, 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 Politics. Politics, that's right. 
Yeah, that's what we found the big picture. No, no, no pictures. I'm going to get all of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, you're tired of this, aren't you? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you walk right up on that stuff. Hey, See, you turn it over and it's got the red and everything on the outside of that thing or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's an outside shield. Yeah, yeah. turn it back over just a second. Let me get in. Mm -hmm. hey, Tony, we found some. Um, they got a bunch some of some yeah, that? we found quite a few across the road. Um, there's also there's some of the blocks that have numbers on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the tile. Okay. Oh, they, they had the numbers and the, and on them. Over there. Uh, there was two people had found pieces and had already put it on eBay. On eBay. <laughs> That's what they were saying. But I, I, I okay. tried to verify that this morning. I went to eBay and looked, and I didn't see any. <laughs> well, they said that they had to take it off of eBay. Oh yeah. Oh. And that, uh, NASA. The FBI, NASA, somebody said eBay cough up. We want to know exactly. Who they have to they tell them. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Commercial Bank has accounts for many local businesses, including soul food restaurateur Aubrey Hooper. I was cooking in the kitchen, and all of a sudden we heard some noise, a rumbled noise, a loud rumble, like it was a, a train running down some tracks. And we looked out, we didn't see the train, we didn't see anything, and we tried to figure out what was happening. And my wife called and says, do you know what happened? The space shuttle just, it exploded, she said. I said, what? I said, she said, that's what that noise was. I said, that's what that noise was that I heard earlier. And there was a piece landed behind the cafe, a piece of the, a towel. The old man that works for me, he uh -huh. cleans up and does my trash and things like that. He was out here taking out some trash and he'd, he'd heard, of, he's not very educated, but he had heard about what had happened with the uh, with the shuttle. Uh -huh. And he came out and says, Aubrey, I think there's some of that shuttle out there. And he didn't really know, you know, he said, I think there's somebody that's still out there. So he came out. Also, there's a piece down here I called him about. I think it's a piece and it's still here. I looked at it and it looked like packing material, but as you get closer to it, it's not packing material. I have no idea what it is, but it seems like it's, it's a strange piece of material. Before you giggle, it is packing material. It just wasn't used by the general public for another year. My friend Christina and her family recovered many pieces of the shuttle, including the GPS. Then they put it all in a big bucket. Right here, and it was, we, we came to look at it before the National Guard documented it. And it was just in this location. And then if you follow me back here, this is where the other piece fell. This is where the larger portion was found that looks like a hood off of a car with no paint. You can maybe tell where it laid for a while. The grass doesn't grow as much there. Me and my family were probably the only people privileged to take pictures before the National Guard documented them and moved them. At first, the Army, local Army and National Guard watched this spot because it had a computer piece. And it was just over next to that light pole. They had cones and they sat there for 24 hour watches at a time. And a lot of locals saw it would pass by and see and stop and talk with the Army officials. I had to actually wait my turn. <laughs> this was where the bucket was and the National Guard guarded it for three days and then the state trooper guarded it for two. And they came in to use the restroom here at her house because, I mean, where else would they use it? It never occurred to me that might be a problem. <laughs> Do you have the Tupperware bucket? <laughs> it's our toy box. <laughs> My family gathered all the pieces they found around the neighborhood, and I gathered a few myself. We put them in the bucket. <laughs> a big Tupperware piece. This is Ben Taylor and David Quinn, and this is a picture of the inside of the bucket. This is the GPS that they were talking about, and this is a piece of shuttle tile and that's tile and then that's metal the box, pieces oh, that's the box okay and then w there's a lot of woods on the property uh -huh. and they also explored that in the bamboo and they found just pieces that actually the other people might not be able to find because they live here and know the area just about everybody felt the ground shake including cats and dogs well, that morning I was on the back porch and I was getting the clothes out of the dryer and the house started shaking the floor and I have three, three dogs. They came running up the back on the back porch and they were scratching and on our back door because they don't like thunder or anything. And I mean, they were tearing it apart, but we let them in and I mean, but the house shook for like three minutes. I mean, it wasn't a short period of time 
you know, that it happened, it just, it kept shaking and shaking. It was just like, so everybody kept saying, oh, I only heard two explosions, but we just, I mean, it was like probably six. I was asleep and my 10 year old son told me after I woke up, mama, there was an earthquake or something. And I was like, well, Bubba, I was like, okay, you know, I just thought he was being a typical boy. And he said, no, the light fixtures were shaking and the house was shaking. So a few minutes later, I turned on the TV and I said, oh, Jared, <laughs> guess what you heard? And I explained and showed him what was going on. Luckily, nobody called about anything as far as dogs getting into anything. I don't think anything is really left around for dogs to, to lick on or you know pick up or anything like that. I think everybody was really quick about picking up or calling in and getting everything taken care of. Doreen Schuyler's family are volunteer medics. As soon as they heard the shuttle, they sprung into action. And when I ran outside, there was this huge large colossal type column of smoke that just it seemed like it was a ring and it had it yeah and then it, it had a, a hole in between it it was just a circular smoke with a hole between it with a trail all the way across there it left a trail for some time it is almost like you could just touch it yeah it was, I mean, so, it was so low that that's why it was just hard for me to believe that it could be the space shuttle I, people describe tornadoes sounding like freight trains but this sounded like maybe a dozen freight trains that were coming through and coming right over our house. The force was so much that it vibrated the bed across the floor on carpet. It knocked pictures off the walls. I took my son and my stepson and my, my stepdaughter and we just took off through the woods, over barbed wire fences, under bushes. The smell when, you know, pieces fell off over there was a smell like um, like a mixture of sulfur, peroxide, and Clorox. We went in to watch the television, and then we it started like hailing. So then when he quit making that noise like hailing, we came out and searched and searched and found absolutely nothing. And she had contacted um, the, sheriff's office. the sheriff's office, and they brought up a fire truck and some other people, and we, we went searching. This was way before <laughs> it was even discovered that it had you know, they first said it was Dallas or anybody knew it was even in Nacogdoches. We were already looking for it. It's from the Texas, it shows the Texas thing. And the shuttle. And the space shuttle base. We're rich. During World War II, a B-24 Liberator made an emergency landing in Nacogdoches. Locals thought the shuttle was trying to do the same thing. The fact is, the runway's in the wrong direction. Pilot Steve took me up in his plane and we flew the same path as the shuttle. We were sitting in the office that morning and heard a, a loud rumble and then a, a couple of uh, what we thought were uh, sonic booms. And uh, we looked out and, and was truly able to, de to detect uh, the direction of travel. I'm going to drop the nose of the plane a little. Okay, see right there? That's the farm that that hydrazine cell was picked up from. Uh -huh. See the, that circle in that grass spot? That's the windsock, and it went directly south of the windsock and just south of our building, so. Nexus traffic today, Bravo and Charlie, uh, crossing midfield at 2,200 Nexus. There was quite a bit of debris that uh, collected and was just hung in the stratosphere and fell very slow because of uh, the no weight. For about 10, 11 hours after the actual uh, uh, shuttle actually broke apart. I'm flying about 118, uh, bearing 118 degrees, and this would have been uh, the actual path. It could have been that it was just slightly, slightly north of, of us, this bearing that we're on, and the wind shifted it, you know, south. But again, the altitude that it was and, and the pieces that were falling off of it here, this is the this is the track or the trail that uh, it led. 